One of the biggest issues that I and many others experience when playing Kerbal Space Program 2 is wobbly rockets. Wobbly rockets were a big problem in Kerbal Space Program 1 as well, but it never felt as bad as it does in KSP2, and Auto Strut in KSP1 basically fixed all of the issues anyway. It's possible to build realistic looking rockets in KSP1 with a realistic number of struts. KSP2 has been a nightmare since launch, and it hasn't really got that much better. Rockets wobble around like noodles, and you need an ungodly amount of struts to keep things stable, like a ridiculous amount. For a vertical stack, I should not need to have any struts to keep it from wobbling. Starship didn't wobble, and that thing is tall, it has draggy parts in all the wrong places at the top, and obviously its flight concluded with it tumbling over and over on itself, and then its flight termination system detonated, and yet it still didn't wobble. But you guys know all of this, either because you play Kerbal Space Program 2 and know this firsthand, or you've watched basically any of my KSP2 videos and have heard me complain about this ad nauseum. The reason I've chosen to make this video about wobbly rockets specifically is because Nate Simpson posted a dev diary on the 16th of June, which included a word on wobbly rockets. Specifically, he outlined what the team hoped to do about Rocket Wobble. In summary, in most applications where inline parts are connected serially, little to no flexing should occur, particularly when neighboring inline parts have the same core size. However, for radially attached boosters or cantilevered sub-assemblies with a single point radial connection, some flexibility is expected. In certain cases, manually applied struts will be necessary. It is important that wings don't require struts to maintain rigidity either. When docking two vessels in orbit, strong and stable connections are desired to prevent wobbling or folding when the resulting vehicle is moved. Considering the impact of joint physics on CPU performance, the increasing part counts as the game progresses necessitate finding solutions that can handle this reality. The goal is to move away from band-aid solutions like auto strut, which involve hidden settings, automatically adding additional joints to increase rigidity. Instead, a predictable and transparent solution accessible to all users is desired. However, if it becomes evident during early access that some form of auto strut is still needed for ambitious vehicle creations, the requirement will be revisited. Now, all of this is something that I, and presumably you guys, agree with. However, Nate made one final point, and that is that, I'm going to quote verbatim now, wobbly rockets are sometimes fun and funny. A big part of what originally got many of us hooked on the original Kerbal Space Program was the silliness and emergent problem solving that came from playing World of Goo with rocket parts. Broadly, we see this as part of the Kerbal DNA and want to preserve it in some form. Whether that means limiting wobbliness to certain types or sizes of parts, or relegating certain behaviours to player settings, is the subject of ongoing internal discussion." End quote. This to me is off target. Wobbly rockets were fun and entertaining for the first 10 minutes of playing the game for the first time. I get that Kerbal Space Program is a light-hearted game with the derpiness of the Kerbals and all that, but I wouldn't describe it as having an inherent silliness to preserve. Wobbly rockets have no place in KSP at all when the rocket is designed well, in my opinion. If I build a replica of, say, the SLS, I would not expect any wobble to occur there. Wobble should be a punishment for building stupid designs that shouldn't work in the first place. Removing wobble was one of the things I was most excited for in Kerbal Space Program 2, and so it's disappointing to see that the problem is not only still present, but it's worse than what it was in KSP1, and this seems to be, to an extent, intentional. Wobbly Rockets in KSP1 was essentially a bug that just sort of got accepted. The thing is though, at its core, I'm just going to come out and say it. I hate the word Kerbal, and I say that not as a noun, but as an adjective. When you describe something as Kerbal, you tend to think of it as an incompetently designed and ridiculous death trap contraption, which I really don't like. There seems to be a wide-held view that the Kerbals are incompetent engineers, capable only of producing flawed designs held together by makeshift repairs. However, I have to hard disagree. Looking at all of the intricately crafted components like the LVN engine, the crew pods, the landing legs, the ion engine, the Kerbals unmistakably possess remarkable tech technical prowess, with technology that even humans haven't managed yet. Look at the Rapier engine for an example. There's no denying that Kerbals might not prioritise safety precautions, and yes, they do seem to enjoy a good explosion or two, but they are still highly competent and capable engineers. 
Liquid fuel engines in Kerbal Space Program have 0% failure rate, and they can be ignited infinite number of times in any atmosphere or vacuum, and their throttle can be rapidly and precisely adjusted. No human rocket engine can come close to this. The Kerbal Space Center itself in the first and second game shows that the Kerbals possess the ability to construct buildings on par with real-life structures, and it aligns perfectly with their character to do so. Additionally, many other components, such as engines, bear a striking resemblance to our human-designed rockets. It's just not justified to erroneously liken Kerbals to orcs, or expect them to construct shoddy structures held together with duct tape. I am firmly convinced that the undue fixation on disasters and the perception of Kerbals as inept engineers solely focused on explosions has a detrimental effect on the game. Kerbal Space Program deserves more than being reduced to a mere disaster simulator, where rockets disintegrate and crews meet their doom, serving as the primary source of entertainment and the anticipated outcome. The achievements of players who painstakingly design exquisite, well-engineered and dependable crafts should not be undervalued. The notion that venturing into space is an impossible challenge challenge must be done away with. Indeed, Kerbals are capable engineers, and it falls upon the players to maximise the potential of their technological advancements. This, to me, is Kerbal's space programme. The challenge of designing a highly complicated craft, designing an intricate mission plan, and then launching said mission, and bringing your crew along for the ride before eventually returning them to Kerbin safely, that's what the game is all about, and what makes it fun, and what keeps me coming back again and again, and what motivated me to play it so much that I sort of accidentally became famous for playing the game so much. The Kerbals are incompetent mindset adversely impacts other aspects of the game as well. The existence of bugs within the physics system is not intentional and it should not ever be defended, as some players surprisingly seem to. Reaching orbit, landing on celestial bodies, or establishing permanent bases should not be perceived as formidable challenges exclusive to the hardcore players. Now, let me clarify that I don't oppose having fun in any way. I, for one, have done loads of stupid stuff like flying a Reliant Robin space shuttle. And I have no objections towards the KSP trailers that often depict Kerbals disregarding safety protocols and engaging in reckless activities. One of the captivating aspects of Kerbal Space Program lies in the freedom to take substantial risks, challenge the established norms and freely experiment, often resulting in remarkable accomplishments and captivating narratives or disasters. <laughs> this concept does not conflict in the slightest with the availability of meticulously designed, technologically advanced spacecraft components or well-constructed buildings for assembling the creations. The perpetuation and prevailing belief that Kerbals are inept undermines the overall potential and impact of the game, and wobbly rockets, yes I'm getting back to the subject of the video, are the result of this wide-held belief. And I know it's not just me. KSP1 developer Artyom Zuev created a developer blog post all the way back in 2013 basically saying what I just did, that the Kerbals are competent and that ascribing the phrase Kerbal as a negative adjective synonymous for sloppy engineering and poorly designed vessels is not something that we should really be striving towards. That was his basis for designing the Kerbal Space Center's buildings. He chose to model them on real-life NASA structures, rather than going for something more slapdash and cartoony because that would be more Kerbal. And in KSP2, we again have very real buildings, but I'm not sure if the current developers held the same philosophy as the designer of the buildings in KSP1, or took thought into the technical prowess it would take to design such a space center in the first place, and indeed the advanced rocket components that the Kerbals possess. I would love it if we moved away from thinking of Kerbals as incompetent, because all the evidence we have points towards them being supremely intelligent, if perhaps a little bit more on the safety third end of the spectrum. And that, my friends, is why I don't think wobbly rockets should be in the game, and why we shouldn't think of them as being inherent to the Kerbal Space Program DNA.